Sure, let's do it. Let's do the mic. Okay, how's everybody today? Good. Good. We're honking for victory. Hakes. Yeah, okay. By the way, just a note. Uh, that person's vehicle, uh, your door has been, maybe you want your door open, but it's been open since I've been here a half hour ago. So anyhow, I don't know if you want your door open or not, but anyhow, um, who knows? You might have some uh, signs jump in your vehicle, which would be a good thing, and then you can put them out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, it's so great to have all of you turn out here today for the uh, our grand opening of the St. Croix County uh, headquarters. And uh, thanks for all the work that you have been doing and thanks for the work that you're about to do. So, and it is vital, it's important. I just got back from Washington, D.C. last night and you guys all saw uh, what happened in the House of Representatives yesterday where you had one of the biggest spending bills that has come before us that has passed that's going to make inflation even worse. They have their sole, uh, what I call the green fantasy spending that they're going to put $400 billion in that they claim is going to save the planet. It is not going to do that. It's going to make people poorer, and it's going to make us more dependent on China. And then probably the part, while all of that is bad enough, the part that may be the worst is 87,000 more IRS agents. Mm -hmm. 87,000 more IRS agents. That's about how many employees they have currently that are going to be coming across the country. And you know who they're going to target, don't you? They're going to target people like Us. you. They're going to target people who are small business owners. They're going to look through, they're going to look through those lists of people that contribute to conservatives, that contribute to somebody like Donald Trump. You know that that's what they're going to do because they have shown they have a history of that. When you look back at Lois Lerner and people like that, where they have weaponized the federal government against the American people. So we know how this story ends. And the only way to make sure it doesn't have a sad ending for a constitutional America is to win in November, right? Yep. That's what we got to do. Absolutely. Yes, we got to win in November. And we have so much at stake. We have so much at stake. I mean, you see Senator Johnson signs. I mean, one of the bravest people standing up against the tyranny that's going on in America. I mean, if, for those of you that with great alarm saw what happened with COVID over the last couple years, I mean, Senator Johnson is truly, along with Senator Paul, have been two of the heroes here in America that have been standing up against it. And by the way, for those of you that follow the news in regards to it, you're seeing them backtrack in various ways. You perhaps saw this past week that Denmark has now forbidden children 18 years of age and younger from taking the COVID vaccine. They have forbidden them. And you're seeing stuff like that that is vindicating, vindicating what Senator Johnson has said for the last couple years. Let's have an honest dialogue, because that's all we've all ever asked for is let's have an honest dialogue in regards to that. So we got, a, um, uh, Senator Johnson's going to have a very difficult race. We have to all be pulling to get him uh, across the finish line. If any of you are living just a little south of here in the third congressional district, this is one of the districts, the third congressional district, that's gonna put Nancy, uh, it's gonna keep Nancy Pelosi from ever being the Speaker of the House of Representatives again. We gotta get that done, don't we? That is one of the districts, the 3rd Congressional, with Ron Kine leading, that we expect to win. <coughs> and if you get an opportunity to help a little bit down there, it's worthwhile. Because we can get Derek Van Orden across the finish line this year, one of the five seats that we need to take back the majority. This is Nancy Pelosi's last term as the Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. And then, uh, we solved, or... or um, we came to resolution with some of our family difficulties on Tuesday. How many of you had every one of your candidates win on the statewide ballot on Tuesday? How many of you had? Neither did I. Neither did I. 
But we don't want Tony Evers as the governor for four more years, do we? No. We do not want Josh Call as the attorney general for four more years. And isn't it time to retire the last of the La Follets and get them out of here? Absolutely. For those of you that are history buffs, I hope you'll go back and look at 1911. It was the La Follets that brought us progressivism in America. Not just Wisconsin. They brought it to America in 1911. That bureaucrats are smarter than their elected officials. And I'll grant, grant you, sometimes they are. But you can at least vote out an elected official, can't you? You can't vote out a bureaucrat. They thought bureaucrats should run the country. That is at the heart of progressivism. Let's retire the last La Follette also here in the state of Wisconsin. You bet. So we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do, and we really need to come together. I mean, look at Tony Evers. I mean, it's really Joe Biden, too, isn't it? I mean, when you look at him, I mean, it really is Joe Biden, too. And by the way, so all the things that we focus on, like record inflation, Tony Evers is contributing to that. That sign on 94, as you go eastbound, that celebrates what? 1,509 grants to people in St. Croix County. That's your money that Tony Evers has doled out that came from the federal government. Those checks he's writing, those are inflation checks. And you should tell your friends and relatives that. When they say, gosh, Tony Evers though, he gave us a bunch of money for this or that. Tell them, it's your money, it was borrowed, and now the inflation is the result of it. We're not benefiting from that. You look at the border border on fire. What's one of the first things Tony Evers did after he was elected in 2018? Governor Walker had sent National Guard troops down to Texas to help them down there because of the border crisis. What's one of the first things Tony Evers did? He pulled those National Guard troops back. He has no interest in controlling what is going on down on our southern border. And understand, every state is a border state. I've been there four times. I've been to Panama. I've seen the wreckage that's happening. And you see the wreckage. What comes in, the front door down there in southern in the southern United States ends up in our backyard. When you see that fentanyl death in St. Croix County, that's as a result of the drugs that are coming across the southern border. Tony Evers, just like Joe Biden, does not care. And then when you look at energy costs that we're all paying for, and we're going to pay a whole lot more if this bill that was passed yesterday gets fully implemented over the next couple of years. Tony Evers is holding a pipeline permit on the DNR's desk. He is holding it as we speak, and he will not allow it to be um, completed. There's a major reroute that's going on up in Ashland County on Line 5, a critical pipeline that feeds our energy needs in the Great Lakes states of the United States. And that permit is languishing on the desk of the Department of Natural Resources because Tony Evers won't say to his DNR secretary, get it done. Joe Biden, Tony Evers, two peas in the pod. We can't get rid of Joe Biden in 2022 but we can Tony Evers, can't we? Absolutely, let's do it. So anyhow, we got a lot of work to be done. And so there's some people out there that have been saying, it's gonna be a wave year, we'll win, all the rest. If you think that in any way, shape or form, disabuse yourself of it now. Tony Evers sits on $20 million as we speak. there He is going to tear Tim Michaels apart in the next three months. And we gotta get out and tell the people the truth. And it's going to be a classic Wisconsin race. It's gonna be decided by a percentage point or two. And by the way, how the governor's race goes is how the attorney general's race is gonna go. For all of you that the election integrity is the most important issue that you have been advocating on over the last year or two. 
You should be full in on this race because there's two people that can do something about it. The Attorney General, the Attorney General could have dealt with all of the election integrity stuff. They could have investigated what was going on in Brown County with Zuckerbucks. They could have done the same work that the Racine County Sheriff did. The Attorney General could have done those things. And of course, the governor could have signed one of the, what, 15 bills that hit his desk that would have ensured election integrity here in the state of Wisconsin. So we've got a great opportunity to have that election integrity by getting rid of Tony Evers. And if we vote Tony Evers out, Josh Call will probably suffer the same fate. Let's get it done. So folks, we got a great message. People know what the problems are out there. They know it's inflation. They know it's record high energy prices. They know it's a border. That is, we are a borderless country at this point. They know it is record crime. And by the way, I hope you in St. Croix County are not sanguine about the crime that's going on over in the Twin Cities because you see it bleeding out into the suburbs. You are a suburb of the, uh, of the Twin Cities. It's going to come here eventually also. And so we have to get control of the crime and all the rest. So let's all unite here. Let's all unite for this election and let's go win in November. What do you say? Absolutely. And I will just close with this. All of us that represent you on the Republican side out in Washington, D.C., view the events of this last week with tremendous alarm because we've seen this show before. We saw it in Wisconsin with the John Doe, for those of you that followed the John Doe. We saw it with Lois Lerner. We saw it with Russia collusion. We saw it with school board parents being targeted. We've seen this before. We have to save our country. We have to save our country. And I can tell you, we get the majority back in the House of Representatives. I sit on the Judiciary Committee with Jim Jordan as our ranking member. Jim is going to be our chairman if we take back the majority in November. I assure you, I assure you, all those people that are responsible for what happened in the last week will answer to the American people. Thank you.